Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to walk you through a factorial ANOVA using IBM SPSS version 26. Before we get started let me note that uh, underneath the video description you will find this link right here which will take you to a copy of the raw data. You'll also find a link to this PowerPoint that is opened up as well and it's going to contain a lot more information uh, that I'm really going to cover in this uh, video presentation. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the example data that we're working from, it's fictitious data. We have student data where students were assigned to one of three instructional intervention groups. So the intervention variable is coded one for instructional approach A, which is a control group, uh, two for instructional approach B, which is one of the treatment groups, and then three for instructional approach C, which is uh, another treatment group. We have another variable which is pre-motivate, which is reflecting a uh, level of pre-instruction motivation. So uh, basically it's coded one for low and two for high. The dependent variable that we're going to be working from is this achievement variable right here. So the conceptual model that we're essentially testing is uh, uh, this one that's shown where we have the effect of intervention on student achievement being moderated by pre-instructional motivation level. So the basic idea is that uh, how students uh, perform in the, th in the three instructional intervention groups depends on what level of motivation they were at prior to the instructional uh, intervention itself. So uh, in this uh, conceptual model then, intervention is being treated as the focal independent variable and then pre-motivate is being treated as our moderator variable. Let me just note that the designation of variables as focal or moderator variable is really more of a conceptual one than it is uh, based on any kind of statistical consideration. The mathematics work out exactly the same either way, but we could have just as easily specified our focal IV as pre-motivate and the moderating variable as intervention. But again, we're going to stick with our uh, first conceptualization with intervention as the focal IV and pre-motivate as the moderating variable. Okay, so here we have our data opened up in SPSS. There's the pre-motivate variable, intervention variable, and our achievement variable. So we're going to ignore this engage variable altogether. So let's go ahead and use our drop-down menus to specify our uh, model and our analysis. So I'm going to click on Analyze, go to General Linear Model, and click on Univariate. I'm going to go ahead and reset everything. We're going to move the dependent variable to the dependent variable box. We'll move intervention over to the fixed factors box along with the pre-motivate variable. Next I'm going to select uh, options and I can ask for descriptive statistics, effect size, even observed power and homogeneity tests. We'll click on continue there. Under EM means, this is estimated marginal mean, so I'm going to select everything on, uh, in the box on the left and move it over to the right. Uh, where it says post hocs, if I want to uh, carry out Tukey's post hoc tests, for instance, with using the uh, intervention variable, given that it actually has three levels associated with it, I can move it over to the post hoc test box, and uh, I could even ask for a Tukey's post hoc test. So that uh, Tukey's is one uh, standard approach to carrying out post hoc tests. So let's go ahead and click on continue. Under plots, uh, what I'm going to select are uh, I can move intervention over to the horizontal axis box, click on add. Uh, motivate, move it to the horizontal axis box to, and click on add. And so this is going to give me plots of the marginal means for intervention and uh, the pre-motivate variables. And then in addition, what I want to do is um, to generate means for uh, intervention by uh, motivation groups. And what this will do is help us to probe the interaction if we find that it is uh, significant and worthy of uh, further examination. So I'm going to move the intervention variable to the horizontal axis, that's my focal IV again, and pre-motivate to the separate lines box and then click on add. You'll see under chart type there are two types, there's line chart and bar chart. I'm going to go ahead and uh, begin with bar chart. And I'll go ahead and click on error bars as well and leave it uh, as the default confidence interval, uh, basically 95% confidence intervals. So I'll click on continue and then on OK. And you can see we have our output. We have um, in the first box up here, we have a table of descriptive statistics. 
Uh, down here we have our Levine's test, which is used to uh, test one of the fundamental assumptions related to analysis of variance, and that is uh, equality of error variances. So the test that has historically been uh, used with SPSS uh, is uh, the Levine's test that says based on mean right here. And the way that we uh, generally interpret this is um, to say that if this uh, p-value right here is indicating a non-significant test result, as we see right here, then that's an indication that we have um, evidence of um, that our assumption of equality of error variances is met. Um, if that test result was statistically significant, then that would be an indication that we have uh, violated that assumption. Just keep in mind that this test right here uh, that says based on mean um, is impacted by non-normality of your variables. And so if, it's, if you have non-normality, then there are circumstances where you might have uh, either an increase in type 1 or type 2 error with respect to those test results. So one of the nice things about newer versions of SPSS is that they include these other robust versions uh, of that particular test. And so you can see in, in all of these cases that um, all of the tests are non-significant, which is further confirmation um, of our assumption that we have uh, met the assumption of equal uh, error variances. Down below you can see that we have our tests of between subjects effects and let me just re reiterate when I talk about the assumptions related uh, to the ANOVA basically um, a violation of an assumption of say homogeneity of variances has a bearing on how we make sense out of the uh, test results that are given in this table right here and it's possible that um, if we have a violation then we can end, end up inadvertently making a type 1 or type 2 error when it comes to interpreting the, the test results in the tests of between between subjects effects. So that was why we started off by looking at uh, the Levine's test. But now that uh, we find that we have evidence of that our assumption is met, we can look at uh, our test of between subjects effects. You can see that we have um, the uh, intervention variable and pre-motivate variables shown over here. And within this table, these are referred to as main effects. So these are essentially uh, the effects of each of the IVs across levels of the other IVs. So uh, this main effect right here for intervention, this is um, the effect of intervention uh, on student achievement across levels of the motivation variable. This would be considered the um, effect of motivation level across the intervention groups. So you can see both of these, uh, we have our F test uh, results, there's our F values and P values that are given. So both of these uh, test results are statistically significant. So we would interpret this to mean that the main effects for our two IVs are statistically significant. Uh, but more germane to our initial uh, question about whether there is a moderating effect of pre-motivate on the intervention achievement relationship, we have our test of the interaction term. So this uh, that's this um, uh, row right here, and you can see that we have statistical significance. So this is consistent with the notion that um, that uh, pre-instructional motivation level uh, was serving as a moderator of the effect of intervention on student achievement. So that's actually consistent with our uh, hypothesis about. Um, about the moderating effect of pre-instructional motivation. You also see over here we have partial eta squared values. These are uh, basically effect sizes um, and if we use Cohen's uh, benchmarks for judging small, medium, and large effects, they would be uh, 0 0.01 for a small effect, 0 0.06 for medium, and 0.14 for large. Uh, let me just kind of note, though, that these are essentially kind of rules of thumb, if you will, and they're really probably most applicable in the social and behavioral sciences. Uh, but he did say don't follow these blindly. Uh, really, you, you should also be con uh, consulting uh, the norms within your literature for what constitutes small, medium, and large effects. So these are probably best useful or most useful in those cases where there's not much of an empirical track record. Um, for judging uh, the magnitude of effects. Nevertheless, if we use those benchmarks, you can see that all three effects, the uh, main and uh, interaction effects, would all be considered large uh, for our uh, model. 
So next, we scroll down. You can see that we have estimated marginal means. So there's uh, the grand mean right there, the marginal means for intervention, uh, pre-motivate, and then intervention by uh, pre-motivate. As we scroll down, you can see that we have our multiple comparisons uh, using Tukey's uh, tests. So you can see right here we have uh, essentially uh, intervention, uh, that's column I, column J intervention. So you can see that we have uh, a column containing mean differences, which is just taking the mean for I, subtracting the mean from J and, for J. And you can also see we have uh, significance values or p-values. So you can see we have appro uh, approach A minus approach B in terms of their means. The difference is negative 4.48, uh, which is indicating that uh, students receiving an instructional approach A scored lower on average than those in instructional approach B, and that difference was significant. When we compare A versus C, you can see that uh, we again have a negative value indicating that students in approach A had a lower mean than those in, in approach C, and that difference was significant. Then when we compare approach B versus approach C, uh, you can see again we have a negative coefficient indicating that students in approach B uh, scored lower on average um, than those in approach C, and that difference was statistically significant. As we scroll down, you can see that we have the marginal means uh, by intervention group. So uh, basically the height of the bars is associated with the marginal means. And you can see that uh, these uh, error bars, these are the 95% confidence intervals um, that have been formed around uh, those means. So you can see that uh, that's for the intervention variable. Uh, this, is, uh, this next one is uh, by the pre-motivate uh, group. So you have the low pre-instruction motivation group and high pre-instruction motivation group. And then as we scroll down a little bit further you can see that we have a plot of the uh, marginal means where along the x-axis we have the uh, intervention group. So we have approach A, approach B, and approach C. And then the different colored bars within those intervention groups reflect whether a student was identified as being low in motivation or high in motivation. So the blues are reflecting the low motivation students and the reds are reflecting the high uh, motivation students. So you can see that within approach A, students um, essentially who were low in instructional motivation um, basically scored lower with respect to achievement than those students that were high in pre-instruction motivation. Within approach B, you also see the same thing occurring. And then within approach uh, C, you actually see that those students that were low in pre-instruction motivation um, had a higher mean than those uh, students who were high in pre-instruction motivation. And by the same token, if you wanted to look at uh, differences between an intervention within the, the um, pre-instruction motivation groups, you can just look at the blues. So you can see right here, there's, there's um, you know, not a whole lot of difference, not as much difference between approach A and approach B as there are between A and C and B and C. And you can see uh, that for the reds within the, the high pre-instruction motivation group, uh, the mean within um, uh, approach A is less than the mean for approach B, uh, the mean for B being higher than C, and then obviously A and C are about the same. Now there are circumstances where uh, in addition to looking at uh, the profile plots, we might want to probe the interaction uh, effect a little bit more deeply by generating simple effects tests. Um, and we can do that by using a little bit of syntax. And so I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to go up to Analyze, go to General Linear Model, and click on Univariate. You can see that everything is uh, should be about the same or should be the same, except I will say that in more recent versions of SPSS, it's had a little bit of a problem with resetting uh, some of the um, uh, earlier specifications, like right here, uh, our marginal means. Well, you have to actually reset this uh, back over to under display means box because it keeps resetting after each analysis. So I haven't quite figured out why that is occurring, but that is uh, a little bit of a bug that seems to be evident in the system. So I'm going to click on continue, and I'm going to leave everything else uh, as is, and I believe everything else should be fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do is click on the paste button right here, and you can see I get some syntax. 
And in this row right here, or this line right here, it's got EM means. That's basically estimated marginal means. So we're going to be ref uh, essentially generating simple slopes tests involving the marginal means from the table uh, that is reflecting the interaction between inter intervention and the pre-motivate variables. So we're going to be uh, using the cell means uh, reflecting uh, different levels of both of those variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in compare and next what I'm going to do is ask, I'm going to say compare and inside parenthesis I'm going to type in intervention. Um, now what's going to happen when I do this is this is going to generate um, comparisons between intervention groups at uh, the different levels of the motivate variable. So there's only two levels of the motivation variable, So we're gonna, but we're going to have uh, uh, comparisons between the intervention groups within those two levels. So just to show you really quickly, I'm going to highlight all of this and click the green button. And when I scroll down, you can see right here that I have a table now that contains pairwise comparisons. So you can see low pre-instruction motivation and high pre-instruction motivation. So we have approach A versus approach B. So this is the mean difference and you can see it's statistically significant. We have A versus C within the pre uh, uh, the low pre-instruction motivation group. Uh, so there's the difference and you can see it's significant. And then we have B versus C within that uh, motivation uh, group as well. So there's the difference between uh, intervention uh, conditions and you can see that that's statistically significant. Among the highs you can see we, we have a comparison between A versus B right here. So there's the mean difference and it was significant. A versus C there's the difference and it was not significant and then B versus C right here there's the difference and it was uh, statistically significant. Um, if you weren't interested in just the pairwise comparisons but you just wanted to test overall differences um, uh, among the instructional approaches uh, within the low and high motivation groups uh, you could go down here to the univariate test and you can see right here we have low uh, pre-instruction motivation uh, and so you have this contrast that's taking place so it's just an F test uh, so you can see there are overall differences among the instructional approaches within the low uh, pre-instruction motivation group and then among the highs you also see that there are significant uh, there's significant variation in the means um, uh, across the instructional groups. Now another thing to note, if you want to um, have your comparisons uh, inc incorporate Bonferroni adjustments, we can go to the same line and just type in ADJ and then inside parenthesis we can type in Bonferroni and uh, when we highlight all of this and run it, you'll notice that now with our, um, with our comparisons, uh, that now down here it says uh, adjustment for multiple comparisons Bonferroni. Now briefly let's also uh, rerun the analysis but I want to show you just what the line graph would look like. So uh, as you can see I've already run the analysis but I'm betting that this has reset as it did. So I'm going to move all of these back over. It's really kind of aggravating. Uh, and then go under plots and I'm going to select line ch uh, chart as opposed to bar chart just to show you what it's going to look like. So when I click on OK and scroll down you can see that we have our line charts that are given uh, right here. And you know basically if um, if there was uh, no interaction we would expect these uh, lines uh, to essentially be parallel to each other but instead you can see that they're not parallel and you actually see a crossover uh, taking place. So again that's just uh, consistent with uh, what we found before which is that we have evidence of an interaction effect taking place.